Today's reading from Matthew's Gospel is taken from the instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples before he sent them out to spread his word through the towns and villages of Galilee. They were being sent out on a potentially dangerous mission and Jesus was briefing them and encouraging them like any good commander or manager. If it was today, you could imagine them bent over their laptops while Jesus writes a few bullet points on a whiteboard, or like those wartime films we've all seen where the commander points to a map with a long stick. But it must have been very different. I imagine them sitting on the dusty ground in a circle, probably in a friend's backyard, with all the noises and smells of the household and the wider community around them, remembering that most towns and cities mentioned in the Bible were hardly bigger than what we would today think of as a village. What would the disciples have been thinking as Jesus spoke? Were they nervous, excited, uncertain? Perhaps all of those things. Jesus is at pains to tell them, whatever happens, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of those who offer you physical violence. Do not be afraid of the division that will happen when some members of a family believe what you tell them and others do not. Do not be afraid because God the Father sees everything that happens in the world and cares about everything. He cares for the sparrows, so how much more would he care for you? Jesus is recorded as saying, do not be afraid, eight times in the Gospels, and the same phrase occurs over 20 times elsewhere in the Bible. Jesus was repeating what the prophets and God himself had said in the past. Do not be afraid of all the bad things that might be going on around you. If you have faith and follow Jesus, then whatever the world might do to you, you will not come to harm. And there is no ambiguity. Those who find their life, in other words, those who make their life according to worldly values of money, celebrity or power, will lose it. And those who lose their life for his sake, in other words, those who give up their worldly values for the values of God's kingdom, will find it. And what are those values? Well, generosity of spirit, compassion and unconditional giving of oneself for others, a rejection of life based on consumption and selfishness, and the courage to live out those values in the face of ignorance and hostility would all be high on my list. But most of all, and especially at this time, we need faith. Simple faith to cut through all the arguments and complications that we're showered with by the media and self-appointed prophets. Faith that Jesus meant what he said, that if we follow him and accept God's gift of love into our hearts, fully and without conditions or expectations, we will have life, real life, in all its abundance and joy.